NASA have actually done it. They followed through on the idea of releasing a list of the targets they're imaging first with JWST and releasing in full color on July 12th, 2022. That's just a few days away if you're watching this video soon after it's uploaded. And we now know exactly what objects we'll all be staring at when the release happens. Let's not waste any time and go straight into the list. It reveals that we'll be seeing five images in spectra on the 12th. That's one for each science objective of Webb. And oh boy, is it a good list. None of my personal guesses were correct. I was sure the pillars of creation would make the cut, but there's still plenty to get excited about. I know five images isn't that many. I'd have loved to see more, but hopefully it won't be too long after then that we get even more from Webb. First on the list is the famous Carina Nebula, one of the largest and brightest nebulae in the sky. Nebulae are basically just huge clouds of dust and gas in space, usually light years in size and home to many stars being born. This particular one has a diameter of about 460 light years, and it's located about 8,000 light years from Earth. It's full of massive stars, including the famous Eta Carinae star, a superluminous hypergiant star that's about 150 times more massive than our sun. The star itself is surrounded by the Homunculus Nebula, and this is just one example of the numerous incredible substructures within the Carina Nebula. My personal favorite detail here is called the Defiant Finger. It's just another small nebula in here, but we have a huge printout of the Carina Nebula in the building I work in, and every time I walk past, for some reason, that one's always stood out to me. Here's Eta Carina in that print, and you can see it's totally blown out in the Hubble image but you can just about make out the substructure of the bulges of ejecta from the star. These were actually visible with the naked eye for a brief period in 1841. All in all, there's loads of detail here to get stuck into once Webb releases their image, and it's an incredibly exciting target to see in super high resolution infrared detail. Lots of the detail here comes from dust, and Webb will see through that dust using its infrared cameras, so it'll be interesting to see what extra details we can find once Webb release their image. Secondly on the list, we have Stefan's Quintet, an incredible dancing group of five galaxies four of which form the first compact group of galaxies ever detected, and it's by far the most famous compact group. It's hard to give an exact distance to this object because the different galaxies here are at different distances from us, but we think the group of four are between 210 and 340 million light years away, while the fifth galaxy is a much closer 39-ish million light years away. This is a lot further away than the Carina Nebula we just saw, because each of these are entire galaxies, not just nebulae like Carina. In these visible light images, you can see lots of gorgeous detail of the group, but lots of that detail again comes from dust and gas that infrared light will be able to see straight through, and so we should get a totally different view of the group when Webb releases its images. We have seen the group in infrared before from the Spitzer Space Telescope, and while it's impossible to hate the smiling face that appears here, I really hope that's still in the Webb image, the resolution does leave something to be desired. Fortunately, Webb's resolution is way better than this, so expect to be very happy with the improvements we see in a couple of days. Next up, the third thing we'll see isn't actually an image, but rather it's a spectra of the atmosphere of an exoplanet, specifically exoplanet WASP-96b. This is a giant planet composed of mainly gas, and it's nearly 1,150 light years from our solar system, but this leaves it easily within our galaxy still. It orbits its star every 3.4 Earth days, has about half the mass of Jupiter, and we've known about it since 2014. We won't see an image of this planet, but rather we'll see a spectrum of its atmosphere. This will tell us what chemical elements make up the atmosphere, and it could tell us how the planet formed, what it's made of, and how likely it is to support life. I guess that since it's a gas giant, the chances of life are small, but in 2018, there was an interesting suggestion of sodium signatures coming from the planet. This doesn't really improve the chances of this hot Saturn planet supporting life, but it does make it likely to be pretty cloudless, and we can use it as a useful benchmark for characterizing other exoplanets. The very precise spectrum we'll see on the 12th will surely teach us a lot about this alien world. I know a lot of people were hoping to see the TRAPPIST system here, and it's a bit sad we're not getting that. But there are a couple of early release science missions confirmed to look at that system, so rest assured that we will learn a lot about it very soon. Fourthly, we have SMAX 0723. I actually don't know if this is pronounced SMAX or S-M-A-C-S 0723. 
but Smax is more fun, so I'm going with that for now. This is also the one object I've never heard of on the list. An initial Google search suggests I'm not alone either, because this easily has the least information available about it, but it won't be an unknown object for long. This image will show massive foreground galaxy clusters magnifying and distorting the distant objects behind them. This is the picture that will show a deep field of the universe. In the background, we'll see extremely deep and extremely faint galaxies. So get ready to compare this one with the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. The record we talk about for the most distant image ever of the universe will be set by this picture. Finally, the last object to make the cut is the Southern Ring Nebula, also known as the Eight Burst Nebula. This beauty is a much smaller nebula than Carina, only half a light year across, but still about 2,000 light years from us. This is an expanding cloud of gas surrounding a dying star. It's called a planetary nebula, although it has nothing to do with planets. They're just another example of bad naming in astronomy. They're all about dying stars, nothing to do with planets. We can actually see two stars in the center of this image, with the bright one being about 100,000 Kelvin. That's pretty hot. And this one is the one blowing off all these layers of gas into the pretty nebula we see here. Webb's ability to peer at that star and into the dusty nebula around it will undoubtedly show us things we weren't expecting, and it'll also just be incredibly beautiful. So that's everything we'll see on the 12th. But to whet our appetites before then, the JWST team have been showing us some more calibration images from the telescope. Firstly, we saw this image from the Fine Guidance Center, FGS, on board Webb. This instrument is basically just there to guide the telescope to point at the right objects at the right time but it can capture images in order to calibrate itself as well, so it actually knows where it's looking in the first place. The images it takes aren't even usually kept, as there's only limited transfer bandwidth from L2 back to Earth. But during a recent test, there was some bandwidth available, so the team decided to keep this one. Almost by accident, this is actually the current record holder for the deepest image ever of the infrared sky, although I'm sure that record is about to be smashed on July 12th. This resulting image, while not being meant for science or to be processed to super high quality, is stunning. Ignoring the observing artifacts like the break in the diffraction spikes here and the overlaps around the edges, we see stunning resolution, even in the faintest objects here. Remember that anything here without a diffraction spike is an incredibly distant galaxy, and I think we can all agree that this shot is awesome. And remember, this is just from the guidance system. What we see from the real cameras on July 12th is gonna blow us all away. We also saw a test image from NERSPEC, the powerful spectroscope on web. Here, it's using its micro shutter array to look at more than 200 objects and take their spectra in a single image. Each strip here is a spectra and tells us the composition of whatever object it was looking at. This might not be the most visually stunning thing to see, but in terms of the science it will produce, this instrument is absolutely breathtaking. This is it team, it's what we've been waiting for and now we know what we're getting. Let me know which one excites you the most and I'll see you on the 12th. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything. Until then, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.